um uh, he was like first time doing the sled and we didn't first time we had a sled we didn't really know how it worked um young kid soccer player um put him on the sled and walked did i think two maybe three sprints walked straight into the washroom and violently okay. puke i uh, made someone puke i think it was like a couple of weeks ago they come in came in hung over that wasn't <laughs> where they had drunk they had been drinking the night before they didn't tell me and um yeah very quickly they packed their shit up and they left yeah. Have you, like the ultimate t therapist type question. Yeah. Have you forgiven your dad? What's up everybody? Welcome back to the BTR podcast. Today, as you can tell, we're back at it. We got another guest with us. So without further ado, let me introduce him. He's a fitness enthusiast and fitness trainer who's the co-founder and co-owner of Fit Nation BC training facility in Surrey. He's now a marathon runner, <laughs> uh, host of the Nation Talk podcast, and he's also the biggest hype man we know. So <laughs> yeah. bring this guy on. It's uh, Ben Gooman. Thank you, thank you, thank you for ben, having me, man. This uh, is welcome, awesome. man. Appreciate thank you. Welcome, welcome. Love thank you for coming. Love what you coming. guys are doing. Absolutely, man. <laughs> yeah. I've known the Ugra Bros for. Fuck, it's been years, man. Yeah. You guys, you guys were kids, man. Yeah. Bro, I, I think I, I came to Fit Nation at grade nine. Yeah, you yeah. were still. That's right. I remember yeah. that, man. That's wild. That's wild. You guys, full circle moment for me, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nice. <laughs> well, for sure. Like you were like once we started the podcast, we're like I was talking to him even before we were planning. I'm like the one person I want to bring on and talk just like talk how it works with you yeah, because yeah, yeah. a you're like, like like we mentioned the biggest hype man we know, so <laughs> know if you called you we're gonna feel good yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, definitely and, man. Uh, i was so proud of you when i heard when you yeah. mentioned i was like yo these guys are doing it man yeah let's start off with this before we get into the early topics ben yeah it's not ben it's not you know it's it's not, yeah. i'm going through a whole rebranding of my, re my life yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. How did Ben and Paul become Ben? Okay, uh, we, we, we're gonna get into some other yeah, 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 serious absolutely. types of later, but yeah. just like a quick brief. I've point. never been asked that question before, so I love that. Yeah. Um, so I was born, my I was named uh, Ben and Paul. Yeah, and um, I started off, and my when my dad was registering my birth certificate um, on my care card, they couldn't fit Ben and Paul for some reason. I don't know what the issue was. So on the spot, he just came up with Ben. And that showed up on my, my, my care card, right? So I actually went to school just down the street from here, Kalsa School. Yeah. And for the first, whatever, till grade six, I was Ben Paul. Everybody, no one had a problem pronouncing it. It was all upper name. No one had an yeah, issue, right? Yeah, Kalsa School, for sure. Kalsa yeah. School, right? So then uh, uh, my mom and dad got a divorce, and uh, I went to a public school, F.D. Sinclair. And there... Um, all white teachers, right? <laughs> and uh, so they, my mom goes to register me and the, the the secretary at the front, she's like, okay, give us like all of his information. And she's trying to pronounce Bene Paul. And she's like, well, we can't fucking do this. What do you mean? <laughs> I, I can swear, right? Is that yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, so they're like, well, what the fuck do we do with this, right? <laughs> like, what is this shit, right? Um, so they're like, what other documentation do you have? And she gave them my care card. They're like, Ben, perfect. Yeah. And since then, Ben stuck. So it's actually the white man <laughs> that yeah. gave me Ben, <laughs> yeah. right? And it's stuck ever since then. But um, I've kind of gone through like a uh, self-discovery phase for the last couple of years. And I kind of want to get back in tune with... Uh, I feel like I've been anglicized, right? Yeah. Like I, I've, I've kind of had my identity taken from me as my name, right? And I l allowed that to happen. Yeah. So for the longest time now, even on Instagram and everything, I go by Ben and Paul. I introduce myself to new people. It's Ben and Paul, right? Unless I'm being introduced by someone that they know, Ben. But I kind of, yeah. I don't want to overcorrect because it's so not really that big of a deal. You want to call you Ben and Paul? Or you want to call Ben and Paul? Would be great, man. Right. Let's hey, start ben off this podcast with Ben and Paul. All right, Ben and Paul. Yeah, sick. All right, special guest Ben and Paul. That's it. Right. There you go. We'll get into more on the the Punjabi anglicized. And yeah. talk in a bit, but before we get into your journey, we're gonna just do a, do a quick rapid fire, get to know you a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So just you know, a couple of your favorites. Or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the lovely audience at home, uh, favorite sport or sports outside of running? Outside of running, <laughs> um, favorite sport? I'd say the one that I follow the most, probably powerlifting. Yeah, okay. I know it's like a okay. total well, random one. Outside of that too. Outside of that too, powerlifting. Um, it would probably be basketball. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Basketball. Yeah. All right. Favorite sports teams. Favorite sports teams? Uh, I'd say San Antonio Spurs because I'm a big uh, Coach Pop fan. Okay. I, okay, I follow yeah. coaches more than anything because I'm yeah. a coach, right? So yeah. I'm like all about that. Sure, so I'd yeah. say Spurs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Favorite athlete? 
favorite athletes uh, again, Tim Duncan. Uh, he's uh, I feel like this he does one you could pick runners too. <laughs> runners too. Yeah. Okay, I'd the say first one we knew you were gonna say powerlifting. And yeah. Running. Okay. For yeah. for sports teams and stuff. Okay. For Tim Duncan because um, I feel like he doesn't get the praise he 100%. deserves. He's like yeah, he's very he's underrated. a goat. He's a goat. Uh, I don't believe in the goat, but yeah. I believe he's one of the goats for what he's been able to do. He just got um, uh, nicknamed uh, Backboard Duncan for so long because he was always just, yeah. he wasn't glorifying anything. He was just yeah, yeah. get the points, do what coach yeah. says, get the job done. That's a coach's dream, right? Yeah, so yeah. Tim Duncan for sure. For runners, Kipchoge. Um, he's the GOAT runner of all time. Uh, marathon records. He's got a sub two hour marathon, which is fucking unheard of. Yeah, yeah I right? heard, I heard and, of that thing. Um, uh, he has actually one of my favorite quotes where he says, um, only the disciplined ones are free. So yeah. only, only the ones that are disciplined are free. The ones that are like free um, like spirits and just kind of go by whatever the day says and blah, blah, blah. They're actually slaves to whatever is going to come to them next. But people that have their life disciplined, they're the ones that are actually free because they're in control. Yeah. yeah. Right. Quick question about Kim Chogi. Like, what was his kilometer pace? Like, into, oh, like, it was nuts. nuts right? I think it was like uh, sub, sub three minute pace. Yeah, sub from three minutes. Sub three yeah. minutes. Like, uh, today's, my today's workout was uh, I had to do 10 sets of one minute at uh, 3.52 yeah. and then um, five sets at uh, 3.41 and then five sets at... 326 and bro boss man like, yeah i was like i wanted to throw up that's why i was late coming here i was just like trying to make myself throw up so i just just get it out of me so yeah. i can yeah. just keep going and workout took a lot longer than i thought it would and i did it a little later in the heat hot and day. yeah it's hot yeah. day too and so and this guy yeah his training paces are freaking nuts man like three minute paces in training and you train a lot less than what you run at yeah and uh, a lot of these marathoners they actually run without a watch they run off a of field yeah. And oh, okay. so their so their training is so airtight. They are so in tune with their training and body that they know what pace they're going off just intuitively. And that is like goat level fucking training, right? Where they're like, I don't need digital anything. I know I'm at this pace. Okay, now I know I'm at this pace, and I gotta slow down to this pace, or I'm this and that. It's it's crazy, man. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. Favorite food. Favorite food, fried chicken, man. Fried chicken. <laughs> fried chicken and waffles. That's my favorite dish. Like your cheat meal food? That's, uh, I don't really believe in cheat meals. Um, honestly, when you're a runner, the best part about running is eating. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I train so much that I can get away with what most people can't get away with in terms of caloric intake. Um, but yeah, I'd say fried chicken and waffles. Syrup, butter, the works. Let's fucking go, man. <laughs> All right, fo Follow-up question. Favorite Indian food? Favorite Indian food? Probably sog, man. Sog? Chicken and sog. <laughs> that's my shit yeah that's my shit yeah 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 um hobby outside of just training hobby outside of training <sighs> shit this is something i've been working on this year um fuck i should have oh dogs man like yeah, uh, training yeah. my dog being with my dog and just kind of connecting with my dog is probably one of my favorite hobbies outside of that's not connected to anything yeah. yeah, I mean, when uh, when we were younger, Amr got chased by a dog. So oh, really? Yeah, so he's scarred. Yeah, 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 yeah. scarred, so scarred a little. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up with dogs yeah. since yeah. I was a kid, and uh, I've had a few dogs now coming throughout my life. And my goal is to um, be able to get to a point where I can have just raised dogs as like my retirement. You're gonna be the classic dog walker. With yeah, the yeah, 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 with the, <laughs> with the, with the <laughs> belt and uh, like fifty dogs and yeah. the hairs all over the place. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, favorite movie or movie series? Okay, favorite movie. I got a few of these, okay? I'm a big movie buff. That's actually one of my bigger hobbies outside as well. Okay. Yeah. So I'm a big movie buff. Um, favorite movie is this movie by Al Pacino called The Scent of a Woman. Okay. It's fucking insane. And the last, particularly the last like 15 minutes of the movie, he's got this monologue that he goes on on. And if you haven't seen the movie, go watch The Scent of a Woman. It's incredible. Al Pacino plays a blind army vet that pretty much wants to have the greatest weekend of his life before he kills himself and you know there's a whole bunch of stuff that i don't want to ruin but it's i'm getting goosebumps just talking about it <laughs> favorite movie series uh would have to be the godfather okay. we don't okay. count godfather three because that didn't exist <laughs> <laughs> that's not a real movie godfather one and two we ended at two okay. all right yeah. um favorite tv show favorite tv show hmm. okay so i would have to say the sopranos because i've seen it probably 
eight times now when i'm like just kind of want to numb out and just want to chill out i'll just throw on a random episode of the sopranos and it still hits just like the first i wish i had never seen the sopranos and i get excited when people have never seen it because i want to know what it feels like to have never seen it and watch it for the first time again like to have oh, that okay experience. Yeah. i've never had that with another series before um but sopranos go sopranos and the wire i'd probably say like pretty up, up yeah there. we haven't watched this so. <laughs> watch the sopranos guys <laughs> it's actually a crazy character study on um the human psychology and uh like it's it's actually a show about mental health that is wrapped around a mob story yeah uh and a mafioso and it's like and tony soprano was like the first ever anti-hero where he was like terrible human being kills people racketeering you know fucks people over he's pretty much a straight up mafioso but you feel bad for him right he's got mom issues he's got family issues like his kids um he's got you know cousins that he's got issues it's actually very indian as well italians are the closest white people to indians that we can get to yeah. so i related to the show so much and that's why every time I go back to it, it's it's super depressing too. And like my wife reminds me of that, where she's just like, you know, maybe we should take a break from Sopranos because it's super depressive and <laughs> yeah. stuff. And I'm like, it's so good, <laughs> stop, right? Um, but yeah, I'd say those. Okay. Mm -hmm. Favorite Punjabi and English singer slash rapper. <laughs> Favorite Punjabi singer. Where? I actually have him on me, Kanwar Grewal. Um, oh, I wouldn't yeah. really call him a singer as much as I call him a Sufi um, poet. Um, he is probably, uh, he's changed my life in many, 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 many ways. Um, just through his quali and his, uh, his spoken word. Um, he'd probably be my number one. And uh, you said the other one? English. English singer? English singer. Or rapper, it could be any. Oh, uh, favorite rapper is obviously Jay-Z. Um, I actually, uh, funny enough, the name Fit Nation comes from um, right around the time when Jay-Z was breaking up with Rockefeller. And he inked one of the greatest deals in music history with where he was... Um, gonna leave Def Jam where he pretty much negotiated to buy back his masters yeah. and owns his masters and then uh, he's like okay now I'm done with Ro Rockefeller he had a big falling out with his partners as well and um, he created Rock Nation and that was around the time when I was getting sick of my job and I created this personal training company and was looking for a name and it, then it hit me right then and there I was sitting there I was reading this article about this crazy move that Jay-Z made and he called it Rock Nation and I'm like yo the name's Fit Nation and it's Fit a homage Nation, yeah. to one yeah. of my I, I, I wouldn't, I'd almost call him a mentor from far away because I've kind of studied Jay-Z and his moves and stuff. And obviously I'm on a very different level than Jay-Z is, but I've kind of learned a lot from the way he moves, right? Um, and so I named my company pretty much after one of my mentors. Yeah, and then final question. If not fit, if not fit nation or any like fitness trainer or athlete thing, Mm -hmm. What do you think your career would have been? I was actually talking to my wife about this. Um, I've gone back and forth with a few things, but it would be, um, I'd probably be a, a therapist. Yeah, I'd yeah. probably be a therapist. Um, uh, people are, I guess, I, I've been told that um, I'm very easy to talk to and people open up to yeah, me 100%. about some uh, like a lot of like stuff they can't go to other people with and uh, I might be that hype man that everyone thinks but I'm also a guy that creates space for people yeah. and um, I've been through a lot of stuff in my life right and I've been able to I mean, I don't know if you will ever really heal past a lot of your stuff, but you learn from it and you go back to it to eventually make it your superpower. And I'm able to kind of relay that message and bring that out in people as well. I call it the gift of the trauma where you if you're going to go through shit, you might as well use it in your advantage, which I have a lot in my training and my life and business and everything. And um, I find that that people are able to kind of take that from me. And if I could go back and who knows, man, maybe in my fifties, I go back to school and actually go to university this time and actually graduate yeah. and become a therapist. Right. Yeah. yeah. It makes um, sense. Cause like there's a reason why I called you too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Just a quick comment or thing. Like for when it's like things like stress and stuff, like I'm just like personally, I'm like, okay, I need to get away from this, get away mm -hmm. from this. But like, and then I recently learned about like, you know, try to use it in your, as your, as your power, try to mm -hmm. use it as your motivation type mm -hmm. of thing. And like, mm -hmm you know just try to get through it like that way yeah. instead of just avoiding it yeah i've i've been i've i've actually it's a double-edged sword with that because in my training a lot a lot of the stuff that's happened to me throughout my life i use it in running especially when i'm on say i'm doing a half marathon and you're you know 
kilometer 13 of a 21.1 kilometer race and races are completely different than training and you're just fucking giving it right yeah and i really go deep into some of like the holes that i had and it's a dark place but what ends up happening is when when you've kind of really come to terms with that stuff and you've you've <clears throat> for lack of a better word healed from it it's not there anymore you almost feel weaker because it's like you identify and, and, and your problems and your issues are so uniquely yours that once you give them up and you can't go to that energy source anymore, you're almost lost. And I've found places where I've kind of tried to dig deep into different memories that have kind of fucked me up over time and they're not there anymore because I've gotten better from them now. I've made them a positive thing and then it's like, oh, fuck. I don't have that anymore. So you can't be too reliant on it as an energy source. It's a good thing to kind of tap into, but leave. Um, but you don't want to stay there because then it, if you get stuck in that negative dark rut of using that as your superpower, that becomes the only thing you can use. And so I've been lately with my running coach, been, been finding um, good things that are happening in my life as well to use them as a superpower, right? Um, like I said, now kind of tap into like future kids that I want to have and stuff like that, as in like, this is why I'm doing this. So I'll tap into that. Like, you know, I'll, I'll picture having my, my kid in the future and then, you know, grabbing them at the end of that race and holding them up high and celebrating with them so then I can use that positive side as well. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, and that's a good mental image to have. 100%, for sure. yeah. All right, so we got to know you a little bit. Let's start from the beginning. Okay. Uh, personal journey first so yeah. well, before the fit nation came into things absolutely how'd you get into working out when did you get working out did okay. you play any other sports yeah uh yeah just start okay. there absolutely so um i was raised by a single mom born and raised proudly from surrey uh it's another thing that i want to kind of it's been like a personal mission of mine is bring the pride into surrey back um we should be proud that we're from surrey i'm born and raised from surrey you know i was i was born at surrey memorial hospital went to school and lived my whole life in surrey and i'm fucking proud of it right um it's kind of fucked me up in ways in many ways which any city can right but um born and raised surrey bc uh single mom and my mom's kind of a gangster where um she kind of noticed my brother and i had a lot of aggression and anger that we got from our father and so um when when the divorce happened and everything i i kind of my mom set up a room and we went to a pawn shop together and at the pawn shop, I don't even know if they still have pawn shops. I know they have them in the States, but I haven't really seen anyone yeah, over here. Yeah, not but really. uh, we get to the pawn shop and there's this bench press set up and it's got these two gold 35 pound plates on each side. And I was just enamored by this thing. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Right. And my, and it, my mom clued in. She's like, it's perfect. You know, he's got anger issues. Let's get him start working out. So my mom set up a bench at my house. I think I was like 12 years old. And um, it was at the same time when, okay, now I got a bench and I start. It was like pre Google and Internet time. So you're kind of like left to magazines to kind of figure it out. So then, you know, I'd be going grocery shopping with my mom or my mommy and uh, I'd be in the magazine section and I'd see this grotesque uh, this guy his name's he was called uh i think it's called the monster marcus rule and he was just the biggest grotesque guy in the world and i'm like what the fuck does this guy do so we bought the bodybuilding magazine muscle muscle mag i think yeah and um started going through it and started just kind of messing around with different types of workouts and the first exercise i ever did and still my favorite exercise of all time is the bench press and um the journey started from there that's how i kind of got into working out and outgrew um kind of like the the workout bench that i had at the house and then my mom got me my first membership and uh i did grow up kind of playing sports i played the ymca basketball league was never really good um and so i always just gravitated i never really played any other more organized sports other than just just working, uh, out. Just working out yeah and uh, i was just kind of a, a gym nut um always you know my mom would do perfect daycare for me right like my mom would just kind of drop me off at 12, 13 years old, not realizing there's some negative influences in a gym where, yeah. you know, yeah. you're a young kid and you're there all the time and these guys see you, they're going to kind of influence you in one yeah. way or another. So a couple of shit, a couple of things that I went through that I shouldn't have gone through, but um, working out's always served me from fuck preteen age, age till now. Um, so you mentioned like your mom and dad divorced. Mm -hmm. now. Those of you guys don't know, Ben also has a podcast, or Ben and Paul. <laughs> ben and Paul. Ben and Paul. Ben's, Ben's okay, too. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. You guys knew me before Ben yeah. and Paul. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, has a podcast, Nation Talk podcast mm -hmm. on YouTube, which we'll get allude to in a second. And you've and your co-host at the time um, has shared many personal stories. Mm -hmm. And one of those stories was your the parents' divorce yeah. caused because your dad's alcohol addiction. Yeah. Yeah. Growing up, how old were you? How did it scar you mentally? Like, what mm. were you, like, what, how old were you essentially? And um, what was going through your mind at that time? 
Yeah, you know, so, it's like as a Punjabi, divorce is on her. her yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Especially back then. Yeah. yeah. Now it's obviously a lot more common and stuff. But uh, and people people are able to talk about it and stuff. But back then, uh, when my mom was like almost like a like a pioneer for 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 what she did and how she kind of stood up for herself with the support of her family, of course. Um, like without my mama and my nanny, like. I mean, she, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be here right now, right? Like, I would be in a very, very different position. And so would my mom. But um, my earliest memory, like, I mean, I think one of my first conscious memories was, um, like, you know how everyone's got that first conscious memory? It's yeah. almost like you wake up and you're like, oh, fuck, I remember everything now. Yeah, right? yeah, I was, like, yeah. really young, like, you know, five years old, maybe, maybe even four. And I remember waking up in my bed and my brother used to share a bed with me. So we'd I'd wake up and it was just like, huge fight happening in my house and people are yelling and, and I'm kind of coming to and my dad is throwing shit breaking stuff and he's hammered right and I remember like I still remember that distinct smell of alcohol in the house it was so bad right and we grew up with the Maraji Swati in our house full yeah, yeah. not the Sentia the full yeah. Maraji Swati right yeah and so all this is happening and I'm like running around trying to figure out what's going on. I see my, my daddy's just sitting there letting like all this stuff happen and my, I'm looking for my dada and he's doing part in the, uh, in the Babaji's room. And it was like my first kind of like, oh, what the fuck is going on in this house, right? And then my dad was being super like aggressive and violent and um, that was like my first conscious memory of it. And then off, over time, that's pretty much, it became the norm, right? Like he would beat all of us like he had his own issues right and i've come to come to kind of realize that he had a lot of demons and zero resources which we are actually blessed and privileged to have the resources now to deal with this stuff but he had none of that and i mean a lot of it for him i mean i, I can't really i never had a relationship with him like i was in those early ages i was like he was my superman even through all of that you're a young kid you yeah, don't know it's any your better. dad like you it's would your dad assume that. yeah he's it's a your superman dad, yeah. man he could do no wrong so you kind of just like especially when it was like my first conscious memory it's like the norm so i don't really know i never really knew what it was to have like a calm household um and he did love his kids right he did love his kids and i do remember receiving love from him but we also there was a lot of violence from him right but he was my superman and um it's funny because uh some of the old pictures i have with him is of him flexing and he was big into working out and uh, we have a lot of stuff which is like you know nature and nurture you have that always that that thing and he used to love jeeps i bought a jeep and it was yeah, my favorite yeah, classic, yeah. classic yeah. right and and he loved jeeps specifically jeeps um uh, and so like it was like a very violent time uh in my life and um like that was kind of like the first memory i had of of like that type of that what was going on in my household and then you know things like escalated his his alcohol abuse went into drug abuse and 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 kind of he deteriorated from them from him but one thing i will give him credit for is regardless of how much he drank or or what types of things he did he always got up in the morning and went to work like he never missed a day of work and 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 that's kind of in weird ways now i gotta kind of chalk it up to him that like i some of that work ethic i got from him like regardless of how i'm feeling or how sore i am like you know i've run marathons on Saturday, sunday got up four in the morning got my shit together at work by you know 5 45. Yeah. yeah and like th you don't take days off you do not that's just not my pedigree right and um so there's certain things that now that i've matured and now i'm in my 30s i can kind of chalk it up to him because I like after all this stuff happened and then my mom like you know having her wits end with it and uh, my mama telling her that listen you got to leave him like she had a lot of support early on I transitioned from my dad being my superman to my dad being my enemy yeah. and and that was my fueling source for so long because then my mom comes up to us and she's like listen I have to leave your father um, but I, I will not leave him without your guys' support. I will stay with him if you guys want to stay with him. But um, I think it's better for this family to leave. And she, she kind of brought us in on that stuff at all times. And she never, even after the divorce, like she never said, don't see your father. She used to tell us, go see your father. This guy how, is still how old your were father. You like, at that time. I was 99. So I was probably well, you're, not, you're not 99 years old. No, no, no. no. Okay. How old? Like, it was 99, 99 when the divorce yeah. happened. Yeah. So I was probably 11 years old at the okay. time, right? Yeah. So you so young. So still young, yeah. 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 You, you don't know your head from your ass, right? And um, I don't know. It's like maybe it's an Indian thing or maybe it's just an immigrant thing. But like um, 
I had to grow up really quick because shit got real, real yeah. quick, right? And uh, the divorce was nasty. I mean, um, there was a lot of altercations that happened leading up to the divorce and a lot of violence leading up to it. And even after, while the divorce proceedings, the divorce went on for almost, I think, a year and a bit. And uh, he would show up at my mama's house where we were staying and he'd be drunk and there would be physical altercations there. And, and so there was like a lot of moments where, you know, I didn't get a chance to have like a real childhood because I had to grow up real quick. Yeah. Just seeing that stuff, you don't really care for toys and other things when it's like, holy fuck, this life is real yeah. and like it's happening right in front of you. So there was a lot of growing up that I had to do at a young age. And um, so I transitioned from my dad being my Superman to my dad being my sworn enemy. And I was like a proud son of a single mom. Everything I did was for my mom. And it was like, no, I'll, I'll stand up with you. If you don't have a man next to you, I'll be the man, even though I'm like, you know, 12 years old. Um, so there was a lot of like responsibility that I took on on myself. And my mom tried to avoid a lot of it because she understood she's got this really like guys, mo most moms do this intuitive ability to understand what her kids needs and all that are. But for me, it was like, nah, like I'm here and I'm, yeah. this is why I'm a man now. Right. Yeah. Um, so that was like the early, early ons. And then from then, like I never had any contact with my father. I mean, he tried to like, he would come to our schools and, uh, I remember him leaving gifts at the schools and stuff like that. And I was, uh, I was probably, I would probably chalk it up to my naive pride uh, in not kind of letting him in, even though he was giving me a chance. And it was like one of my biggest regrets in life is not sitting down and having that conversation with him of just trying to understand like, yeah, you fucked us up. You did all this crazy fucking shit. But like, just get that closure. Yeah. And like, what was going on? You know, like yeah. what, what the fuck happened to you? Right. Yeah. And maybe it would have served me better in my life, understanding how things can get to that extreme level and, and, and know those signs before they get to in my life. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so then I became that proud person for my mom and, and have been ever since. Yeah. So you, you didn't have a relationship, like you said, how about you hit your dad's side of the family? Your dog, dog, Nobody. Dog, no, they no. were so all strictly non -gay no. Yeah. So I'm raised by non gay. Yeah. Um, uh, the, his dad's side there, my dad's side they're they're all pretty fucked up. Like along with the violence that we were see from my father there was a lot of like from my puas and my puas kids they bullied the shit out of us uh i remember um yeah like fuck being a kid and like uh, they used to live in england they'd come over and they would just beat the fuck out of me and my brother like just full-on fist fight toss us across the fucking room i remember getting wedged so hard that they made me bleed yeah. um uh, and like shit that really fucking scarred yeah. me for life and that's why i actually also have a really twisted sense of humor they actually introduced me to porn when i was like fucking nine years old maybe eight years old because we used to have a black box and then i would sit there watch tv with them and they'd be they'd throw on porn and they'd think it'd be a big funny thing and they'd just expose me this eight-year-old kid yeah. to it and i'm like oh my god like no what the fuck and they'd move my hand and they're like yeah. no yeah. you don't watch this shit like went through a lot of fucked up shit as a kid um uh, and i've done a lot of therapy to kind of go, go back and heal it but also i got my twisted sense of humor from all out of yeah. it too because i what do you do as a kid like you can let it crumble you and you know whatever and i i just crack jokes about it now yeah to be honest but yeah i never had a relationship with my father or my father's side um by choice right um my father i regret that choice but the other side of the family i really honestly yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. They, they're like your mom and dad no exactly yeah. yeah yeah no there's like the divorce thing like now obviously we're not you're not obviously saying, oh, yeah, if, if like, you have, you get a divorce. No, you no. You want to make work. Yeah. Like, this is extreme, no. yeah, obviously. Yeah, for sure. Because there's this one podcast, um, Hours Before Midnight, mm -hmm. and they had this one guest. Her name is Brob. Similar story to you. Like, mm -hmm. um, she, well, her mom remarried eventually, and obviously she loves her now dad. Yeah. But her, she explained that story too. Similar, like, her dad was, like, essentially a drug dealer, yeah. alcohol, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. Same story. Mm -hmm. And she's, like, obviously at that time, same, right, about the same age. I know she's younger than me. Mm. But, yeah, so it's, like, it's crazy because like the divorce. I, I don't know if you've seen the car movement Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that 100%. one post of that um, the woman that committed suicide because there was like a video. Oh of yeah, I seen yeah. that. Yeah. I seen that. Yeah. That's actually I, I had to uh, stop following it because it started investing yeah. so much of my life into it because it's like it bring up so much older stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that one specifically and how like yeah, like I remember up it was. I remember asking my mom. Now obviously, granted, they're fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of when course. you're younger, yeah. you see them argue. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. oh. Um, why don't you just get a divorce? So mm -hmm. like, I remember watching a Punjabi movie, Love Punjabi. It was like, as a joke, like, why don't you just get a divorce? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, oh yeah, like it's not a thing. Like it's a shame if, mm -hmm. we, if we divorce, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then obviously I know, we're not gonna get into detail. You guys could check out, again, Nation Talk podcast. Mm -hmm. They have a divorce episode. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of mind blowing, but not like you said, it's, it is better, but obviously, 
divorce isn't like a, just a normal break. No, no, it's absolutely. like a financial, huge financial, and legal. Like, but at that point, if you have kids and stuff, and yeah. there's a lot of stuff that you need to consider. But yeah. I feel like there are some cases where. Um, it has I've, to happen. It has to happen, but some cases where it's an easy out for people as well. Because I've been in a relationship since I was in grade ten. And I've been with my wife for almost twenty years now. Yeah. yeah. And you know, like if I if I have learned anything, it's you got there's a lot of shit you got to work on in a relationship and and a relationship isn't finding the perfect person it's finding potential that you can grow and develop with you don't want to be and look for a situation where this person gets me for who i am and i'm not going to change that's not what you are what a, what a, what a terrible way to live that you think you're going to just be the same person the rest of your life and one thing i've learned with my wife is like we've developed together we've grown together we've are not the same people that, you know, we first started dating. And uh, but we haven't been the same people since we first got married, like in 2017. Yeah. We've changed so much. And that's what you have to look for. It's like most people that when there isn't, when there's stuff to work on, they're just not willing to change. Yeah. Um, and that's what relationships require. Obviously now when there's violence and drug abuse and all that, that's obviously that's grounds for but like when yeah. there's other like stuff that stuff that can be fixed you have to um exhaust everything at your fucking disposal to make a relationship work and then you develop like okay hey you know what this isn't gonna work you touched right. on it a little bit right so like i wanted to get into the mental battles mm -hmm. obviously young kid young kid going mm -hmm. through that were you the oldest by the way um the middle middle okay middle, yeah so usually when you you like you said you see your you see this at a young age and, and it's etched in your mind that like oh this could be me in the future mm -hmm. did you have that mental battle and how did you deal with it in terms of like what like your relationship with alcohol oh i see my dad do this mm -hmm. i'm never gonna drink alcohol yeah. or any yeah. substances yeah. or you know i'm never gonna get married because maybe i'm gonna be like my yeah. dad have yeah. you gone through that like did you regret like you know you got with your wife obviously in yeah. grade 10 you mentioned yeah, yeah. but before that you're probably like maybe you were like what's the point of me dating? I'm yeah. not trying to marry. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be like my dad. So yeah. you kind of have like yeah. that, even with your wife during yeah. the dating period. Definitely. Too, so I, yeah. I've, I've had, I've had different forms of that for sure. Um, with the dating part, um, I just happen to find like my wife's perfect. Yeah. Like she's the, she's, I feel like we've been together for lifetimes before this, just the connection yeah. that we have. Um, but I felt like the divorce actually did the opposite effect on me where it was like, I'm going to make this work. Okay. No matter what happens, I'm going to make this work. And it served me so well because I also, it could have gone the wrong way if I had the wrong person in front of me and I would have just been some sort of simp fuck that would have just done anything. Or like, says, or just right? like in general, um, I don't want him to get married. Yeah. I'm yeah. scared yeah. that I'm, I might be my dad. That wasn't, at that the end wasn't, of the day, we, have, we share the same last that name. Came and, up, yeah. That came up for when I, my early thoughts of having children. Because yeah. I had a major insecurity around... I never had a father, so I don't know what it's like to be a father. So yeah. I'm going to only ruin a child's life. So I don't want kids. Yeah. That's what fucked me up on that end. Um, with the alcohol, um, it was a funny journey. Um, my whole life, I never drank alcohol. Um, and then I, then I started getting older and I started realizing that Man, you're not your father. You stop proving that you're not your dad. So you didn't drink because of your dad. Because of my dad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because of my dad. I didn't drink because of my dad and like what it did to my family, what it did to my mom. And um, then it came to me and I was just like, dude, you're not your father, man. Like stop trying to prove that you're not your father. You already exist in a realm where you're not. Yeah. You are your own individual person. So then I had my first drink and I'm, I'm a casual drinker. Like I've had times where, yeah, you know, you get hammered and you whatever. Right. But um, I'm usually more of like a conservative drinker. Like last night I had a couple of glasses of wine while I was making food and stuff like that. But I don't I've now feel like I've healed past the point where I don't need to prove that prove by doing all not doing all the things my dad did right isn't going to make me a better person and if i do the things that my dad did like you know smoke weed or drink i'm not going to become him either i've kind of gone past that and i realize i'm walking in my own feet in my own shoes looking at my own reflection that isn't connected to anybody i have resemblance in terms of how i look but who i am and what i am is so far beyond any of that stuff that i don't need to live in a realm where i am that person anymore or i'm going to be influenced and become that anymore yeah. I'm, I'm healed from that because like at that at that stage it's like you're trying to like you said you, you did the opposite right yeah. like sometimes if i look at my mom and dad fight it's like yeah i, I ain't trying to deal with this yeah, so yeah, like, yeah it's yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. You're, you're using that as your fear mm -hmm. like for example like mm -hmm. that's the word way i could put it like mm -hmm. you're fearful for something that may not even be the case right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. everybody's past is different for sure so 
last part of this, you know, I know obviously got a little depressing. No, here, no, no. We, we want to share this for a reason. You need to. Yeah. You need to be. Uh, yeah. Have you like it's an ultimate therapist type question? Yeah. Have you forgiven your dad? Yes, I did. Um, this one's a little fucked up. So, because like ultimately, sorry, I'm gonna just cut you up here. Just ultimately, because now you now looking at you now, you're you are successful. You have, yeah. you're running your you. dream job, fitness and race. Yeah. Absolutely. It would not happen if that was it was for that. For so sure, that's probably why. One hundred percent. A lot yeah. of it was in spite of, and yeah. it's a terrible way to kind of fuel your like we were talking about motivations and stuff. It's not a good motivator, but I can't say it hasn't served me and 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 done wonders for my life. Um, but it also has taken from my life, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I for, I've, I have forgiven him, and I gave I forgave him through. So he, um, so my mom, like this was while we were running Fit Nation, we had another business as well. It was uh, Sansar Solutions. I used to do bookkeeping and stuff. We used to go out there and close clients. And, and uh, we were going out to close one of our biggest clients to date. And uh, my mom called me and she's like, oh, um, in the morning. And she, she never calls me in the morning, right? I'm like, yo, what's going on? And she's like, your dad's on life support. Like his organs are failing. Like this, this doesn't look like it's going to end well, right? I'm like, okay, cool. Then pay it no mind. Um, and I, 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 it did start affecting me. Right. But whatever I had task at hand went handle the task. And as soon as we, whatever, close the sale, driving back from Vancouver. And uh, my mom calls me saying, uh, he passed away. And dude, when I say immediately, like a flip of a switch, you'll turn all these lights on and off. It was just like that. This crazy guilt came over me and no longer was I thinking about the violence, the drug abuse, the alcoholism, nothing. It was just like, what the fuck did you do? Right? Like, what did you do now? Like, I, I guess in the back of my subconscious, I had this thought that I would always be able to kind of have that conversation maybe when I'm older and I'm, I'm whatever, but it was never a conscious thought. And, and now it was brought all to my frontal lobe and into my, into my conscious. And it was like, you're never going to get that chance anymore. Right. And, so from right then, like, it was like, dude, man, like, w w you're an asshole. I went through the darkest period of my life. It was not when I was going through that stuff with my dad and all of that. It was after he passed away. It was when that depression started hitting me. And it was like, now you don't stand a fucking chance of getting that. Yeah, like it shows that um, and you hear athletes say this, like, you don't know what happens in life. right? No. Like, the minute we're done talking, something, obviously, God forbid, yeah, 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 but I'm yeah. saying you don't know what's going to happen either to us or anyone yeah. else in your uh, family or mm -hmm. friends or whatever, mm -hmm. anyone random even. Mm -hmm. So like, it's like, if you do have that quote unquote enemy, like you were saying, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. want to have that closure that you, w that if you want to maybe reach out to them. Right? Yeah, that, definitely. Oh, I would like, yeah, highly, highly recommend like, that. Like, love hard, but forgive quick. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's one thing I would have just killed to like, I would have killed to just, um, you know, have that conversation with them. Like, what the fuck happened? Like, yo, how have you been? Like, what, yeah. what's up? And then a lot of other stuff started coming out where um, I used to work at a bank. Um, and so he would always keep tabs on my life and um, or my, my all of our lives, my siblings lives and yeah. stuff. And um, he knew that what time I would leave work and just to get a glimpse of me because I had told him, listen, I never want to see you. Do not fucking come near me. Don't contact me. We're yeah. done. Right. Yeah. And he got that message and he's like, OK, you know what? I understand you're absolutely entitled to that and I'll respect that. So he would park up the street from my house. He knew exactly what time I'd leave for work just to see me get out of the house, get in my car and drive away just to see what his son looked like. That shit fucking broke my fucking heart, dude. And I was just like, you know, like, yes, he did all this shit. He did all of this Maybe stuff. Maybe he wanted to change. Himself. And and I never gave him that opportunity. Yeah. And these are his kids. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And like to be able to, to, to have taken away that, that moment from him is so much more than having a father taken away from me um, in terms of just my thinking of it. And that's probably one of my biggest regrets in life of just, just, you know, I didn't have to forgive him, but I could have just given him the courtesy of just Explaining. knowing his kids are good. Yeah. You know, his kids are doing well. Like, you know, imagine him finding out what I did with Fit Nation and what I'm doing with my my relationships and and and, you know, like who I've become and 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 even the running like it would have excited him so much and yeah. it would have meant so much to him. And so now I kind of move forward with that. But it's still like, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a sore spot still. Yeah. But I kind of, again, use it for fuel. Right. Yeah. And I yeah. use it as a lesson. 
Um, Cause now, now that you say you have an issue with, I don't know, a friend yeah, or yeah. a family, not maybe to, not to that extreme because that is your dad. Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, sure. maybe two weeks later, you know what? If it wasn't worth it. Yeah. Let's sit down and talk it out, right? Yeah, I, I do have that, but I also, I don't, I, um, I, I wouldn't say I forgive as quick. Uh, yeah, yeah. anymore i move also- on i move on very quick though. yeah okay that's the other thing yeah. like i'll i'll um once i know like uh, my wife said the dopest shit to me she's like um when people show you who they are believe them okay don't try and convince yourself otherwise of they're not xyz yeah. when they're showing you they're a piece of shit and they're doing xyz believe them and move on you, we have an abundance in life. We don't need what, what doesn't serve us in our life anymore, yeah, right? But like, obviously, like, everything is different. Like, mm-hmm. that's true as well, mm-hmm. but maybe the person is trying to. Yeah, for so sure. That yeah. You, gotta, you have to see, okay, maybe for sure. that was true five years ago, yeah. but now you could see them genuinely being like full on. Um, approving. approving. Yeah, for sure. Like, 100%. They're, they're stopped alcohol, have for to, example. Yeah. You have to kind of fucking move on. Move on quick, but also just be aware of like a bird's eye view of yeah, situations as sure. well, for sure. All right. That was great there. Let's transition <laughs> yeah. that was, that was off. But again, like we need, we, we need to talk about 100%. this. Like it's important. People see the outside of you, but people yeah. don't realize like yeah. Ben went, or yeah. ben like what ben went, went yeah. through certain yeah. things. And sure. also it's like for people at home, like they could be going through this stuff for too. Sure. Yeah. So like just because this conversation could just help them like, 100%. you know, get a first step or type so, of thing. So obviously you mentioned this was the reason why that one of the reasons why motivating readers, reasons why you got into lifting and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So let's get to Fit Nation now. Mm-hmm. All, uh, when did you realize that, you know, you wanted to be a trainer mm-hmm. and then ultimately open up Fit Nation? Because you had a partner of three. We won't mention names just for yeah, privacy yeah, for reasons. Sure, for sure. But um, you ultimately, yeah, like when did you realize you want to be a trainer? And then why open Fit Nation? Why not do like an independent scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, just start there. Okay, absolutely. Um, so I went to Kwantlen, um, uh, studied criminology there. Long story short, you know, dropped out really quick school was not for me um uh, just wasn't my thing and obviously broke my mom's heart but my mom's like all right you gotta do something real and at 18 i got a job at the bank Uh, she actually helped me with that and so you know i get a job at the bank and um i'm a talker like i love talking i love connecting and and that really served me very well in the bank i moved up very quickly uh and so before you know it i was um i was an account manager at van city i was doing mortgages for people i was like you know 20 one maybe 22 young kid fucking doing like you know half a million eight hundred thousand dollar mortgages thought i was the man and then i got positioned in a branch uh in walnut grove all the way deep in langley and it was nothing but lifers that worked there and so there's these older 50 60 year old women and and i see their their repertoire and how they they kind of go about their day to day and what their life was and um started looking around and i was like dude this is going to be the rest of your fucking life like, holy shit. So I had my first ever panic attack sitting in my office. And back then my office was just like a cubicle. Next to me was a cubicle and another cubicle. So three cubicles. I was on one end. Next to me was a lifer. The other side was a lifer. And uh, I'm sitting there. And this is after like, you know, fucking came back from my lunch break. And I'm just kind of fucking going through like my, my files and stuff. And I start breaking out into sweat and then right when I started breaking into sweat the walls started closing in on me and I kind of hurled up under my office and under my chair and I was just like fuck fuck and it hit me like dude this is gonna be the rest of your life and right then and there I was just like dude you can't do this forever like what the fuck like you got to get out of here it was like the universe just didn't send me a sign it took a Mack truck and blew me right through the middle like it kind of just really just woke me up right immediately started googling um first thing i googled was personal training and first thing that showed up was a certification that i could get and i signed up for it immediately and i had a really really dope young brown manager sandeep shout out sandeep man you fucking changed my life man with that one conversation he um i signed up for it started doing it and then uh, i went to go see him and i'm like hey man i need to go part-time and he's like what's going on you okay i was like i'm gonna keep it a buck with you um I don't know if I can do this forever. And he's like, what the fuck's up? And I was like, bro, like I'm looking around at, you know, Cheryl, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yo, I can't do this the rest of my life. He's like, bro, this is what I've wanted for you. He's like, I saw you come in as a young brown guy. And I was like, 
this the last thing I want is for him to be with Van City forever. Yeah. And I was like, right away, had wicked support. He's like, okay, we're going to change your schedule. You're going to go Mondays, Fridays, Saturdays. Those three days you're going to work in the middle. Um, uh, when I do performance reviews with you, we're actually going to talk about your business. And so he kind of really motivated me and guided me to kind of, he actually got me a bunch of clients and stuff. So I'd go to work on Monday and then um, I would put up a bunch of ads on Craigslist and start getting clients, right? So then ads would go up on Craigslist, people would contact me, and I'd started getting clients. And from there, BCRPA kind of gave me like a rubric of how to kind of set up people's programs and stuff, but I always have been working out for like fucking 10 years by then, so then I had my kind of way of doing things. And um, just bought a bunch of equipment, kettlebells, bands, stuff like that, and got one one client that was in Vancouver, uh, and I would drive, she wanted to train at six in the morning at Kitts Beach. So I'd leave Surrey, hit traffic, cross two bridges to um, make, I think it was like 15, 20 bucks a session that I was making. And then I'd drive back. And so eventually what I started doing was I started saying, okay, thing with me is, man, like I'm big on, I don't want to just be the one doing everything. I want to kind of rise up with the homies, right? So I reached yeah. out to a couple of my friends and I was like, yo, um, this is what I'm doing. Let's fucking, let's, let's see if we can do something. So then um, uh, Jazz, he was going to UBC and then Pradeep was doing his thing and Pradeep was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to get certified too. And then Jazz was like, I'm finishing up my degree. So all this stuff just kind of organically happened where I was like, yo, like, let's fucking do this shit together. And so we started building up our book of clients and um, before you know it, you know, I started getting more and more clients to the point where um, I was getting sick of driving around everywhere. So I was like, set up my backyard, uh, put up a little roof up in the backyard and then uh, just threw up a squat rack, throw some weights up there, got introduced to Mark Ripito, who was the starting strength uh, coach who started starting strength and got into barbell training. Yeah. And um, so then the three of us um, started just getting into like powerlifting and that type of stuff and developed our program around that. And um, in between then, the, you know, the name Fit Nation came about. I sat there, thought of that, um, and kind of like was like, okay, sounds like we got something here. And from right away, it was never like, okay, this will be plan B or plan C. It's like, we got one plan. This is what we're sticking to. So then I sat down and one of our mentors, uh, Colin, um, who's actually a really, really good friend of ours, um, really mentored us around marketing and stuff, but not just marketing, but the marketing was like the caveat of how you run a business. And the first thing he said is like, um, one of the things, it was a book that we read, uh, it was uh, Steven, Stephen Cuffey's, um, I know this, I know this, uh, The sure. E-Myth, The Entrepreneurial Myth. Yeah. And in it, one of the first chapters says like, um, you have to create roles. Even if you're the only person, you have to have a role. Um, uh, roles, and even if you're doing all of the roles, have them clearly defined. So I sat there and I wrote out, okay, these will be all the roles. This will be what the CEO does. This is the marketing. This is the operations and X, Y, Z. And then kind of presented it to the boys. And I was like, yo, what roles do you guys want? They kind of picked whatever roles they want. And um, they kind of appointed me the CEO. And they're like, you know, you kind of like handle this side. And so from there, right away had an organizational chart and just dived into what we call the real life MBA was just like, you know, kind of fucking what is a master's in business, but through real life and through trial and error, fucked up a lot of things, got a lot of things right. And, you know, grew, uh, grew the backyard to the point where when the first winter came around, we started losing a lot of clients because they're like, we don't want to train the fucking rain. Summer was popping in the backyard, but as um, soon as like the fall started showing up, first couple of rains, and we're like, man, need that right? Like yeah. we gotta figure something out. So we started driving around in my neighborhood, and we saw four lease sign up, and um, we saw the four lease sign, and we saw the guy uh, Stephen Gammer um, uh, was the realtor, and. Um, so we called him up and we tried to act like we knew what the fuck we were doing. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and he quickly realized that like, you guys have never leased a building before. eh? And we're like, no, he's like, all right, <laughs> you guys got lucky. He's like, I'm retiring soon. Uh, so I'm not going to try and, you know, take advantage of you guys. But why don't you come by my house? I'll walk you through everything you got to worry about, blah, blah, blah. So he really held our hand through the whole process of how to negotiate a lease, how to negotiate tenant improvements and, um, you know, we learned a lot of stuff along the way, like little tidbits, like, you know, most people in the fitness industry, this is American standards, but they kind of apply universally. Um, most people will drive 12 minutes in traffic to get to your facility. So then we did a, radi uh, a radius around the, the facility and saw, okay, it's a high density population. It's a good spot. And uh, so 
uh, Mr. Gammer kind of helped us through negotiating with our landlords who are amazing people as well. We've gotten like the universe has served us a lot as well. Like mostly you hear horror stories with landlords yeah. and we had great landlords. They were amazing. Um, they helped us out a lot lo along the way as well. And um, opened up our first facility, you know, didn't know our head from our ass and just, you know, kind of like started just drawing out where the squat racks would go. Okay. We thought turf, like one of the first bits was like, it's either going to be turf or we're going to have the sand sand pit like a sand strip to do sprints on and stuff and like oh it's gonna get messy blah 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 so we ended up making that into turf and then from there our our clients blessed us man like once we had a facility they just started referring like crazy and we started getting a lot of clients and then right off the bat even from the beginning we had our own system of training right whereas like we're movement-based people uh, we do small groups we don't do one-on-ones we don't do you know personal training per se but we do it in small groups we give them personal training through small groups so we don't have to charge you know a thousand bucks a month for training we can still keep the price relatively low but so like there was a lot of like when it comes to a business, like there's like so many things, the more things you look into, the more you realize there's so much that you can do with say packages, say facility layout, say, um, you know, if you needed a shower or not, um, in your facility and stuff like that, and then permits and all of this stuff. So we just kind of learned everything on the fly and, um, kind of just developed our, our, our business as we went. Yeah, I'll say that one thing for me that came in clutch was a water fountain because I always, <laughs> <laughs> I, always for, I always forget my water bottle at home then like yeah, yeah, yeah. then I'm like all right thank we almost didn't here. get it we almost didn't yeah. get a water fountain one of the things arguments was like yeah most people are just gonna bring a water bottle why would we need a water fountain we're yeah. gonna save the money and we don't have to run the wire and uh, find the um find the main water line and stuff like that but um yeah no we got that in and then the other thing that I fought for early on was uh trademarking the name yeah so uh, trademark the name uh, right off the bat. And like, I know a few of the guys were like against it. They're like, yo, it's going to be 1200 bucks. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, we, is there even a point? Of, who's going to take our name? We ain't shit. I, I fought like hell for it. And uh, funny side story here. So we own the trademark in Canada. And uh, there was an American company uh, that was using our name, Fit Nation, to sell product in Canada. And uh, it had come up a few times and a couple of random people had called complaining about a part on their bike and they're like, it's a Fit Nation bike. And I'm like, you know what, what the fuck is this, right? So emailed the guy. I'm like, hey, you guys are using our name and stuff like that, blah, 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 whatever. Had a long back and forth. But long and short of it is that uh, we ended up negotiating um, a leasing our name to them for five years and they give us royalties on their sales. Um, so it was kind of like a, a, a big like salute to us. So it was like, hey, man, like, you know, just maintaining that trademark and believing in your name and that 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 thing that you created early on paid off way later in life um and made our money back on whatever it was yeah. going to cost us through just licensing our name you yeah. didn't have to do anything on our end right yeah so one obviously every fitness trainer is different right now obviously you mentioned the name your partner's name giles mm -hmm. and pardeep mm -hmm. i'm sure they'll build mine because yeah, uh, yeah, yeah 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 well even if they do fuck them yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was just playing yeah. Yeah. but no um each trainer like comes like even like co soccer coaches, basketball coaches, like you're in hard ass coach mm -hmm. or you're a friendly coach. Mm -hmm. You're somewhere in the between. You guys are obviously for us is like, you're not hard mm -hmm. ass, but you guys are definitely more like, like you've mentioned it on your guys' podcast in general, the family like atmosphere. Yeah. Um, now, obviously you guys are, you know, every time we've come in, like, you know, if you were training us or we were training by whether one of the others, we'd all immediately talk sport or yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, when yeah, it came yeah. to like actually doing, doing the, the squad yeah, or doing yeah, the bench yeah. or whatever, it's mm -hmm. like, no, you got this, but you, mm -hmm. is it, is it, it isn't like you guys were shouting at us. Like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? You're no, going to no. do like two more. We're on your side. But it's yeah. like, no, you got yeah. one more on yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah. obviously why that approach worked best for you mm -hmm. and like that family, like I'm sure, cause to be honest, we're going to get to it later. Cause the funny yeah. story I'm going to bring up, but there's a reason why we kept going to you guys. Right. So, for that bit so like the developing my identity as a coach um is probably just an, a, an extension of who i am right as like a person so for us it was like like yeah like i mean i'm, I'm a hard ass if you're like my training partner and we're running um definitely like there's no puppy dog shit like we're wolves when we're out there on the road and doing this stuff and you know like buck up get the fucking job done right uh but when it comes to our people we had uh, we realized early on that like we were getting people that are general population these people are need to have a positive experience through working out especially women because we'd get a lot of women early on and they would get so many negative experiences so one of the challenges that we were going to face early on was that listen you're a bunch of guys training a bunch of indian women that don't 
want to go to a gym because their eyes of a gym is like meatheads and stuff like that. Yeah. So we immediately had to number one with the music, right? Made it super comfortable with the type of music that we played. And number two, how we introduce them to weight training because a lot of women think they're going to get bulky and stuff like that. So we couldn't be that hard ass coach. We had to be like, no, Panji, you can do this. This is going to work great for you to lose weight and build confidence and stuff like that. And, and to give them that, that, positive male influence early on um, was really important to us so we kind of developed it off of our grassroots our, our audience our people right because of that did you think of maybe adding a female partner on board we with the three we, of you we did early on but then when we surveyed our clients um uh, we they realized that like they didn't want to train with another woman they wanted to train with another male right and it was just probably just the 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 uh Kind of like the stereotype men. St exact them. stereotype of, of, of coaches. Yeah. They're mainly men, right? Yeah. And so um, they just wanted that replicated. And maybe a little bit of it was that they were already con comfortable with us. Um, they were easier. It was easier for them to take instruction from a male um, uh, than it would be from a female. But that was just how we surveyed. Um, right now we have um, two kinesiologists, which of, of mine are, are, are female and they're great. Yeah. And most men even want to have their rehab done with them because they're very nurturing, right? So on that end, they're, they're very good good at that end of what they do right so it was never really like we we're concerned of like the type of person we were going to hire as a coach or sorry what what gender they were but more of like the type of person they were so it had to be an inclusive part of uh, of, of of our our pretty much our image and how we kind of did things right and yeah. that's why a lot of our people resonate with us that's probably also why a lot of them kind of dive into their personal life and because like i believe training is probably the the greatest platform for you to um tackle your mental health and and what you're going through in life and stuff like that and that's kind of what's definitely done it for me in my life like we talked about earlier but um for what i'd like and to be able to introduce that to people that are going through real heavy hard shit yeah. and then use the gym as or even the training facility or i wouldn't call fit nation a gym but i uh, use fit nation as like that that home base for them to feel comfortable enough to have those conversations and heal is yeah is, no is like an honor me personally right like i've you know you started working out preteen days right mm -hmm. i didn't until after like high school mm -hmm. university mm -hmm. so when i would go to like these steve nash's mm -hmm. or whatever like at the time it was steve nash because mm -hmm. through Portland it was cheaper mm -hmm. uh i'd go there and i'd just be like like obviously people say don't worry no one's gonna say anything to you but i'm you subconscious right yeah, like yeah. i was like yeah. okay well i'm back to square one I need no to get no back no to it, I but, say that. but like when i was going through there i was like i did feel like subconscious like i didn't know what i was doing i did go with a couple of friends mm -hmm. but even when i tried to go by myself it's like i felt weird because i couldn't bench a plate at the yeah. time i could barely yeah. do the bar right? right right so when i saw you guys ad on instagram mm. and then obviously through a couple of like family friends that went to you guys mm -hmm. at the time as well mm -hmm. and then obviously when i called you guys up and went there it was like no, yeah, and the, like you said, that family vibe, because I had no clue. Like, if yeah. you guys were like, what are you doing, blah, yeah, blah, blah, yeah, then yeah, obviously yeah. I would have like, turned okay, off. now yeah. I'd be like, oh my God. Yeah. There's a reason why I brought him along, yeah, too, because his, his case was the opposite, yeah. right? Like, he needed to build the for muscle. Sure, for sure. So that's why, like, on the personal, like, obviously, personal endorsement here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah no, like, like you said, like, everyone's different. Like, people want, people that probably come in, like you said, are probably wanting to learn how to, like, work out male or female. Yeah, 100%. Right? That's the so. majority of the people, right? But also, like, with, with what we wanted to do, right away i remember some of the first early meetings we had was like the open conventional gym is our enemy what they create is not what we are and we need to differentiate right off the bat yeah right off the bat we are as soon as people come in first of all no mirrors you go to any gym they're full of mirrors it's too much of a distraction right they can some people do argue it's a good training tool and and stuff like that but when you hire a coach your coach is your mirror yeah so right away you come into our facility there's no mirrors you see a turf line right through the middle like what the fuck is going on so it's already not feeling like a gym and then you get welcomed warmly by somebody who's going to coach you through the hardest shit you're going to do yeah. um so we wanted to differentiate right off the bat and that was that was very orchestrated right off the early early stages of our development yeah. um I was going to get into now. Oh, um, now you're on your own because <laughs> mm -hmm, the other mm -hmm. party, and jazz, obviously mm -hmm. they went different ways, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, well, not obviously to everybody else, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. um, <laughs> how like, and you guys actually expanded now too. Yeah, like, right, yeah, right, right, yeah. right when we stopped going, mm -hmm. and again, we didn't stop for like, cause we hated you. No, guys. no, no. Yeah. Why and that's the natural here. cycle yeah. of most clients is yeah. they're yeah. going to take time um, off and yeah. Uh, you guys obviously expanded cause the numbers grew, mm -hmm. but, um, uh, Throughout your guys' day one Fit Nation, when you guys, the three of you guys teamed up to mm -hmm. now, how much did you guys need to learn as coaches? Or is it? Oh, man. Because, like, 
obviously like we had our cousin on here um mm. jeevan mm. and talk about white cup he's like every coach is different mm -hmm. right every every coach needs to learn as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. not just like oh it's mm -hmm. my way or the highway no, absolutely. so you personally how much how different was it from day one this is how you gotta oh, do yeah. the barbell this is how you gotta do the sled yeah. blah 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 yeah. to like the current day for example oh dude so much so early on um as a coach you never stop learning yeah. it's it's a science that is always expanding so you have to kind of um create an environment where it doesn't feel like you have to go out to learn you just create an environment of learning where you're always tuned in with what's going on so i have certain people that are my go-to's of like okay what are they tapping into now and like how is this applied to our clientele but early on it was a lot of just you know you do your fives everybody's got to work up to the barbell everybody does the barbell 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 right and we quickly realized most bodies aren't built like that right so we developed from the barbell side to now what our 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 pretty much kind of like our loose philosophy is um training is rehab rehab is training like a lot of our business is rehab because most people come in with some sort of an ailment or something that they're dealing with right so we find like different regressed versions of movements that they will eventually do yes a barbell is still very much involved but you know some people are going to come in and the barbell isn't important to them right so they're not going to have to do that right um uh, so there will be people that will just stick to kettlebells and you can have a very effective workout through kettlebell training right um but if there is certain strength based goals that you have then yes the barbell is important so we've one of the greatest quotes that have served me so so well is have strong beliefs and opinions but hold them loosely be open to have your change your mind changes right especially right now with what we have online and and the culture that we have created in society is like listen you're allowed to change your mind you're allowed to admit that you were wrong yeah. there is nothing wrong with that we in this society hold people to like oh you said this and this is what you believe so fuck you and it's like, hold on, but let's give this guy yeah, some yeah. grace. If we're talking about grace earlier that I gave with my father, it's like, let's give this person some grace to like, okay, are you willing to change your mind or have you changed your mind? And if you have, let's celebrate that. Yeah. Let's celebrate the fact that you have left your ignorances and you've put them to the side and you've grown to whatever you are. But we don't celebrate that part because we want to just tear down the people that are making the mistake for just opening their mouth online and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I believe hold strong beliefs and opinions, but hold them loosely have them very strong beliefs early on but then be able to be malleable with like having your mind change with actual facts yeah right? yeah so like for me personally like the thing with working out is like everyone's different right because mm -hmm. like you want to make your workout as your own mm -hmm. that's how you stay consistent it's like some people have strength goals some people for like me i was like gain muscle and like help me with my soccer right mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then him it was like lose weight and other yeah. people like just go like i just want to reduce some back pain or like yeah. or just reduce stress tight, yeah. some people come in and just want to just like hey man i have a super heck like i have a, a a lawyer client of mine and she has some of the craziest heaviest cases and she'll come in and it's like i don't give a fuck what i'm doing just put me through the ringer because this physical needs to just be exhausted and i need to relax because she's a high input individual she can put her mind through so fucking much shit and her body will keep her going but at some point she's got to just exert her body so she can relax yeah. right so there's some people that come in for that they're like i don't give i'm not trying to look, I, I look and feel great i need to relieve stress yeah. Right? yeah and there's that too right so is that you know transitioning to another marathon is that why you got into marathon running because so, younger you was obviously lift yeah. lift lift and mm -hmm. now you're not just marathon running running in general which yeah. led to marathon yeah running. so um uh, that all the the running all started um during uh, covid time so I uh, was heavy on the barbell powerlifting days and stuff like that. Uh, and for the record, like I wasn't a competitive powerlifter, right? I was just very much into the squat, bench, and deadlift, right? And so we would actually make fun of runners. We'd be like, yo, what the fuck are these runners? Like we'd drive past runners making fun of them. Like, look at this guy. This guy should be squatting right now. What the fuck's he doing, right? Just pure ignorance, right? And again, have strong beliefs, but hold them loosely. So COVID comes around. And... Um, gyms are shut down everywhere and uh, first you know we tried to sneak you just try and stay open and stuff like that but then eventually people started getting uncomfortable with it as well so we completely shut down and so i remember going to go like work out and um because i had the facility to myself i was like you know i'm just gonna go work out i felt so fucking guilty because again we had built this community and it was like you know you're not sitting on a pedestal above everyone you're leading in the middle like you were amongst the people who the fuck are you to go work out so i started feeling guilty and um around then jazz got into running right and so he started off this boat of running and um kind of like i started becoming intriguing to me and i started just 
you know, getting out there, putting one foot out in front of the other and um, just, yeah, started doing like these 25, 30 minute runs. I couldn't run, you know, three minutes without having to stop to walk. And it was just like embarrassing to me. And like, and it, it, it was like, so it just used to eat away at me. And if there's anything about me is like when there's something like that, instead of turning away and just being like, oh, fuck this shit. And it's like, no, I can't sleep at night because why the fuck can't I do this? And so then I just started doing it more and more and more to the point where, <coughs> excuse me, I was uh, running, you know, I was able to do about 60 minutes without stopping, not anything great pace or anything like that. I think I was running six minute paces, 630 paces um, uh, and still just huffing and puffing and dying. Right. And eventually, like, you know, I started noticing the, the beauty of the human body. I started connecting with, like, human performance so well. Like, hey, man, you used to suck at this. And look, your pace is getting better. Your heart rate's dropping. You're starting to be able to do so much more. And best of all, it was getting rid of a lot of my anxiety. Right? Yeah, it's like, obviously, tr strength training, you need it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, like you said, like, the younger generation, especially is like, gym, 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 mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. when you... Like, especially when I was training, but then when I went to go play soccer around me, I'm like, why am I helping a puppy? Yeah, I'm working exactly. out what's going on. So you systems. still need that. Mm -hmm. You still need that. Definitely. Party. And and I mean, there are a lot of people, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not here trying to say I'm starting a cult and everybody needs <laughs> yeah. to run. I'm not saying that. Like, it, it is important for cardiovascular health is very important. There's many different forms of it being done these days through cycling, through jogging, through biking, through swimming and that type of stuff. Absolutely. But I, I found that running uh, exposes you to yourself. You know, you you... There is no lying in running. There is no hiding from running, yeah. right? When you're out there on a 20 kilometer run and you know, you're 14 kilometers in and you got in that argument with your wife and you knew you were wrong and that's going to come out because you, your physical isn't, you know, holding you up anymore. It's just like, no, you, I've had so many honest conversations with myself of like, what the fuck were you doing talking to your mom? Like kind of like shower thoughts. Exactly. Yeah. Like, exactly, shower thoughts, right? yeah. <laughs> like running has peeled back my ego because the road always wins. You never yeah. win with yeah. running. You're never going to win. The yeah. road is always going to win. And the road is always consistent. You're having a bad day. The road's still there. You're having a good day. The road is there. Yeah. Your knee hurts. The road is still there. You're sitting inside for a rest day. The road is still fucking out there. The road yeah. always wins. Right. And there's something about that where it's like, I'll spend the rest of my life trying to beat the road and I'm never going to win. Yeah. I yeah. know this. I'm never going to win, but I'm going to win in becoming a better athlete, a better person and discovering more about myself through this fucking enemy outside i have yeah. called the road right yeah, yeah so last thing with the marathon running your goal i guess do you want to do all the major marathons mm -hmm. around the world mm -hmm. on on last thing also um is there anything after marathon running you want to do yeah right now like i'm not trying to get too ahead of myself so i want to do the the abbott world champions which is um berlin london tokyo chicago boston. new york and boston okay. yeah so six world majors i'm training for um, my qualifying race is in december so i've hired a coach this year i've been with coach ron since uh, march game changer all of my numbers have changed hit a huge personal best in my half marathon did a 125 in my half marathon and uh, I'm head on into a big marathon build. So my training is starting to get picked up a lot, lot now. And uh, December 3rd, I'll be doing the California International Marathon in Sacramento. And uh, there I'm going to be aiming for a three sub three hour marathon. My right now, my personal best in the marathon is 325. Um, so I'm trying to shave off 25 minutes to give people perspective to shave off three minutes. Time is incredible, unheard of in training. I'm trying to shave off 26 minutes. So um, I got a big undertaking, but uh, I feel good uh, where I'm headed and where I'm going. And then starting next year, I'll be starting my world tour. And um, then Just after that'll keep me busy, but by the till I'm at least 40. And then after that, they call like I got I got plans of, um, you know, holding my own marathon, uh, calling it the Surrey Marathon uh, or the Surrey Nation Marathon. I got a name still pending, so don't hold me to that. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted I want to bring the community together. Right. Yeah. Like I want to. I want to kind of introduce running to people as a caveat of not how to, you know, stroke your ego in terms of races and stuff like that, but to expose yourself to mental health and, and to your own body. And, and you know, what a, what a privilege is it is to have this vehicle. Why not push it to the limit to see what we are actually made out of? And, and, and you know, another thing that I want to kind of introduce past marathon, it's not so much into training in terms of what my next physical goal will be, but is to introduce masculinity back and i want to kind of um 
create a, a, a masculine men's circle around, um, you know, using weight training. I have the facility as a background for that. I have running as a background for that. And then just to be able to talk about man shit. And I feel like masculinity has been under fire for the last few years. And I feel like it's unfairly prosecuted or persecuted um, when we need men. And it's okay for us to tap into the uh, sacred masculine that we all have in us, which is that fearless, humble leader um, that's in within all of us. And I feel like that needs to be reintroduced. And that's kind of my bigger goal through this. I want to involve more people once I qualify for my world majors. Why not start my training cycle for all of my major races? I want to get the community involved to hold uh, bigger run clubs and stuff like that and, 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 and events around that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's funny because like, you transition to the next topic. I want to get to the last, yeah. last serious thing before we get to the Connection. fun, quick yeah. fire type. Yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah. The mental health side mm-hmm. of things, right? Like you mentioned, you what, what you went through earlier t- uh, today. Mm-hmm. Um, why is it like you mentioned all these struggles you went through and said? So why is it important to you to be that mental health advocate, especially to the Punjabi community? Like you said, Punjabi males. Yeah. Um. I feel like. Uh, it is definitely important to me. I feel like it was, I've, I've put myself in a position where it came naturally. And now I see, for lack of a better word, because I don't feel like it's a responsibility, but the, the privilege that's been given to me of like Being having gone through model. all this stuff and stuff like that. I don't know if I'd call myself a role model, but like, I mean, I've, 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 I've done these things in my life and I've overcome and I am still constantly dealing with a lot of these things. Um, and I see a lot of hurt in the community and I can't look the other way while people hurt. But what I ca- and I also can't force people to heal. You can't do that. But what I can do is set myself as, a, as an example of someone that is healing. Um, and if that works for people, I'm an open book. Um, I've always said that. Um, reach out to me if anyone's ever going through anything or anything's going on. I'm, I've always been an open book. You guys know this firsthand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and I've been able to put myself in this position so i can't look the other way so i see it as like um as what i'm meant to do as probably one of my divine purposes yeah um so you mentioned let's go back to the punjabi culture right mm-hmm. it obviously means a lot to you because mm-hmm. the first question we asked yeah, you yeah. Benipal the ben mm-hmm. yeah and now you said you're making that transition from ben to benipal mm-hmm. why essentially i now it, it actually does lead into kind of that topic we talked about earlier of like you know, finding those motivating factors. And for a lot of me, it was a lot of the trauma and like the dark stuff that happened to me in my life. And once I gotten past and overcome that, I couldn't, you know, actually dive deeper or dig deep into those for fuel and motivational energy anymore. I started diving into more of, you know, our history. And there's a wealth of 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 motivation just sitting there the stuff maharaja ranjit singh did in the city of lahore or the the kingdom of lahore for back, lack of a better word um uh, and 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 you know you hear some of like the great battles even like i remember i was hanging out with um uh, gertej nyc ny virtuoso and he told me about the zafarnama this this love letter that guru gobind singh ji writes um to the mogul emperor um uh, and it's a it's a letter of defeat. He knows he's gonna lose this this battle, but he writes him what's reminiscent of a love letter saying, "We may lose this battle and we may lose this war, but what I am not gonna lose is my calm is gonna go on forever, and my name, uh, not my name, my um, the my my people are gonna hold their ethics to a such a higher standard for years and generations to come, and you'll see." And like even that type of stuff is like has has been a source of 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 fuel for me. And so I can't say I've dived deep enough into Sikhi, but into our world history, I have. Like uh, um, I've, even with Guru Nanak Dev Ji, is probably the greatest marathon runner of all time because he yeah. walked to the world. Yeah. There's, there's 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 stories of him in Italy. There's stories of him in in Egypt. There's stories of him all over the world, right? And he reached by foot, right? And um, I, I recently, um, I was actually, I have to give up a lot of it to uh, Gertej and uh, Arki Kandola, um, who introduced me to, um, there was a, the Devinder Tour collection. I bought the book and in the Devinder Tour collection is the, all of the, Devinder Tour has gone around and bought back all of our Sikh history, um, Sikh history um, uh, artifacts. 
and so he's got um, uh, swords and he's got Maharaja Ranjit Singh's cannon. I didn't even know he had cannons back then. He had cannons, he had rifles um, uh, and stuff like that. So I've been diving into that and I find it to be such a huge source of, of motivation for me. And, and we're rich. We are blessed to be of a warrior class and we have such a rich history that if we, I believe that if we dive into, you don't have to dive into Sikhi and, and you know, because I have my, growing up, my childhood was like, I had a very different connotation of Sikhi that I'm not ready to kind of take on yet. But our world history shows us that, first of all, we are descendants of kings. We are a warrior class. And, and if you dive into what we've done as a people, under the craziest of circumstances, it helps us hold ourselves to a higher standard. And, and if we are able to even just increase the standards we live by and hold, hold ourselves to in any part of our life, I believe when the tide rises, all the tides, all the boats rise. So if we just start slowly diving into our, our history and seeing what we've done, we can hold ourselves to a way so higher standard and it's going to improve our lives so much more. So like for you, it's like every Punjabi should try to their best if mm -hmm. they haven't now mm -hmm. to learn not just religion, but like the Punjabi culture. It doesn't 100%. have to be like the whole like the uh, guru's history stuff which is important still mm -hmm. like obviously 100% we're, we're, yeah, it's a lot to take on yeah. it's a lot yeah. to take like on like we still need to learn and I'm on Rishak right yeah, yeah, so yeah, I still yeah. do a lot of learning right absolutely and because uh, we went to Pakistan we went oh, to we India. did all that yeah. Yeah. we did Nankana so, Sahib yeah. 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 so yeah. we learned a lot there yeah. too but like you said like now your your name from Ben the Ben wasn't by your choice no, technically, no, but no. there are people that make that choice mm -hmm. of like, oh, I just call me this. Like, mm -hmm. my name's Amrit, mm -hmm. but I'm so used to saying Amrit. Yeah, to, like, exactly. Like you said, yeah, we English. That also. like, I call it to some Punjabi people are like, you mean Amrit? Like, I'm no. at work and I'm yeah, on the phone, yeah, and they're yeah, like, oh, yeah, Amrit. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. So like, I need to do myself better. Like, I personally don't care if yeah. they call me Amrit, but I should yeah. try my best. Hundred percent. To say Amrit. because you know what, man, we let people get away with it. Um, because if you can pronounce Vivian, tell me you can't pronounce Amrit. Yeah. If you can pronounce Veronica, tell me you can't say Bene Paul. It's, it's bullshit. Yeah. People just need to give the effort. And it starts with us, right? Yeah. It starts with us. And it doesn't mean you go around overcorrecting people. Yeah, yes, yeah. Give, give grace. People aren't going to get it right away. I will correct it for sure if it's like Amrit. I'm like, yeah. okay, that's no, just no, no that's wrong. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine with Amrit. Now we're going okay. to throw hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a different no, no, name, <laughs> But I feel like uh, it's a personal journey for most people um, and uh, discovering our own history. But, you know, we're lucky and privileged enough to have such a rich history that we come from that, you know, we should put a little bit of attention into that uh, it'll help us and serve us a lot and and you know i feel like it kind of does relate to because i don't know anything about my father or where he came from and all of that but i can dive into where i come from and yeah. what our history comes from and i feel like there is probably like a loose connection there where i couldn't do one so i'm going to do the other and i'm going to try and find ways to kind of serve myself through that yeah like so my full name is Amrit Paul mm. i don't mind being called Amrit like yeah. well, obviously yeah. that's a long enough uh, name yeah. but then going from like Amrit to like i don't know Andy <laughs> like yeah, that's yeah, just like yeah, okay yeah that's just random that's right, just yeah. random right so sure. like or some people do that like obviously you do you right like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I'm, 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 if you prefer like if you prefer to be called Ben yeah. I'm gonna be like oh yeah screw you get no, out of my no, of get out of the house yeah. right? of course like, of course you're comfortable with Ben like who am I to say it but mm -hmm. like our job here now like you're trying to like uh, educate a little bit like mm -hmm. no it's, let's try to um, evolve or evolve our culture and correct people when they 100%. need to be corrected For or sure love who you are and try to learn and set the, the standard if yeah. you, it's not even correcting people but if you introduce yourself as Amrit yeah. people aren't going to be like Amrit yeah, because you, know, yeah. you said it with yeah. the right pronunciation so I think uh, a lot of it is just self-correcting and I feel like if you just correct yourself other people will correct themselves as they go yeah. right because it starts with us all right. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm the lucky one, right? Because like Joban just. Joban is like. <laughs> but you, do get, you, get, you get called Joban at times. Joban, yeah. 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 But yeah. Uh, All right. Let's get into the funner side mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the tattoos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, like, obviously, yeah. you know, obviously, some Punjabi people are like, tattoo gunday. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, obviously, yeah. you won't give a crap. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, no, I don't care. And all of them have meaning to you? Or um, a lot you, of them. You don't need to go through it. No, everyone. of course, of course. Yeah. A lot of Anything them do like have that. meanings. Um, obviously, I have my dogs tattooed on me. I have uh, tattoos for my mom. I was in Turkey. Got a, the Turkey flag tattooed on me. Uh, number seven for my wife. Like, a lot of them do. There's even some tattoos that I don't necessarily like how they turned out. But for me now, I've been getting tattooed since I was 18. So, fuck, that's almost like 15 years now. 
No drunk tattoos, like oh, no, 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 yeah, none of that. Yeah. None of that. Yeah. All of them are thought out. No, 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 is uh so same colin um one of our mentors that i mentioned earlier um he used to be a rapper and a poet and um one of his um one of my favorite lines that he has is if uh actions speak louder than words or if the pen is mightier than the sword then why do my actions speak louder than words and it's kind of a conundrum they cancel each other out because for whoever reads it well it's it's up to them right um is it the pen is mightier than the sword then if that is the case for you then why do the actions speak louder than words right yeah so i have a couple of tattoos like that and i have a lot more planned um but i just gotta kind of oh so there's more oh there's, <laughs> there's, more, more, there's a lot more planned i just <laughs> okay. like i've you know at 35 now i've tattooed damn near like you know almost 50 percent of my body so i gotta save a little bit for ideas how I'm much of the time of your life is like a lot man yeah. Yeah. a lot a lot man i mean <laughs> even the dragon alone was yeah. almost a year long and i think we calculated it was almost 27 28 hours oh, if we combined okay. it all together yeah. um and then over time i've kind of built relationship with tattoo artists and stuff like i got malcolm x tattooed on me because that was the first book i ever read yeah. and i was almost 20 years old when i all read the that. same artist i uh, know all bunch of different artists oh, okay. Um, okay. yeah all over pretty much the world now too man yeah from turkey to bc to yeah everywhere man. okay all right let's get into some fun stories now right. <laughs> so first one we wanted to get right into i joined fit nation mm -hmm. all right he joins fit nation about what like a couple of months later mm -hmm. yeah and a few months later probably like six to months to a year later mom and dad yeah 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 what was your guys' reaction? You, well, I guess you could speak for yourself here, yeah, but what was yeah. your reaction like, oh my God, this is family? Because I was talking to, I think, Pardeep at the time and mm. even yourself, it's like, we needed to create a family plan just because yeah, yeah, of you yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You guys were the first full family. It was honestly, honestly one of the, you guys actually were the first family, which was everyone from the family showed up, yeah. minus your grandma, grandpa, right? Um, and um, it was heartwarming, man. Like, uh, what a beautiful thing that we created that, you know, where else are you going to see mom, dad, and their two sons working out together, not just, yeah, they go to the gym and they just sprinkle out to different corners and yeah. do their thing and then come back. No, you guys are right next to each other. All of you are roughly doing the same program. It was honestly just showed that like what you have done in terms of differentiating and, and creating this thing is just like what we call a purple cow which is just so different than everything else is, is actually happening right in front of our eyes. It was beautiful. Man. Yeah. Cause like, um, Obviously, like when I first started, you and Jazz, I remember, mm. were like, "How the hell did you get your protein intake?" Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. For me, it was like, "Okay, well, I'm I'm trying to learn from you." Yeah. But you know, like you said, coaches need to learn, and 100%. that's something you guys learned off of yeah, me for as you, well. Yeah, right? So, yeah. and then even like mom and dad are like, "Oh, you guys are doing good. Let me try to go." Mm -hmm. And the fact that you know they believed us, and again, the reason why we didn't stop was because we hated you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Like, we got life that. happens. Hundred percent, right? hundred percent. Yeah, so, we never take that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, quick story for me. I'm pretty sure this guy broke the record for like losing the most. Yeah, he in the did. Bar, I remember right? the before and after. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. The yeah. inches, right? Yeah. 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 It was funny. It was 50 plus, wasn't it? What was it? Something no, crazy. It was like 16 inches. Because yeah, your yeah. program yeah. was like three inches and yeah. then you got money back yeah, yeah, and you guys yeah, changed yeah, to yeah, five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, it was funny because uh, I got the belt, which was like, it yeah, felt like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where that belt is anymore. I think we gave it to someone. They never came back with it. Oh. And then, um, what was it called? I lost my thought now. But the, yeah, so it's a 16 inches. Oh yeah, yeah, this is what I was gonna go. The hate comment thing, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So remember yeah. that post? Mm -hmm. um, it was like a bunch of random people were like, there's no difference, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And his buddies, not buddies, like people that he went to school with, they were like, bro, like there was no difference. And yeah. him and his other friend actually defended me. They're like, at least he's trying, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like when it came to this podcast stuff, and I think we mentioned it slightly, I'm not sure if we did, but in mm -hmm. our journey podcast, like our first yep. um, non-sports podcast, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm kind of numb to the hate comments yeah. now just because I've seen that. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, eh, it is. Oh, what man, it is. now you guys but are yeah. in the podcast realm. Uh, yeah. If there's any advice I could give you, is uh, don't read the comments, um, number one, and be prepared for hate. Yeah, like yeah. there's a lot that, of that hate. post pretty much prepared man, me for it. Especially in the sports world, like everyone's gonna have their own oh, opinion. Dude, you guys know this first like, time, yeah. man. Hundred percent. Like, there's people that have created fake accounts talking shit about yeah. me. Oh, he does mushrooms. He does acid. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, and so let's let's go there. Yeah, um, yeah, hundred percent. Do you? How often do you get? Are you natty? Are you natural? Are oh you yeah. Steroids? Okay. Yeah. So when I was younger, um, definitely abused steroids. When I was uh, started really young, I think I was 16. I did my last cycle when I was probably 19, 20. 20 may have been the latest I've done a cycle, and I've been natty since then. Um, okay. uh, the only performance answers I take is uh, creatine, and then uh, sometimes I'll microdose uh, mushrooms and I'll or L LSD uh, for my running. I'll do big trips as well with mushrooms and acid as well, but. 
Those are the only performance answers I'll take. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, next up. Funniest client experience that led to a positive sense mm. and maybe a negative sense. And here you don't have to name names for no, sure. No. But okay. like positively, they're like, okay, yeah, the, you guys had a laugh after. And then negatively, we'd be like, okay, oh, I've never seen them again. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I'll, uh, this is actually, I'll, give you, you both, I'll give you both with okay. one. This was a, a negative one and a, and a funny one in the same sense. And um, the it was, you can still consider this positive. So I had a client of mine who uh, he would come in, work out with me quite often. And, uh, you know, he'd see me two, three, sometimes four times a week. And we were doing great and, and stuff like that. And then one day he's finishing his, his session and he's like, hey, Ben. You can just do this the rest of your life, and I'm like, w what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm doing this. Yeah, the rest yeah, of my I life. I left the bank for a reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, well, how are you gonna support your family just you know doing this stuff, and you're just gonna be a trainer the rest of your life? And I was like, I happen to love what I do. What the fuck are you saying? He's like, bro, this is what you're gonna do, man. And he's like, not even like this is what you should do. This is what you're going to do. He's like, you're gonna go, you're gonna become a firefighter. Okay, you're gonna start doing this part time. Yeah, you're gonna go train. Uh, be a four, firefighter four days a week. The four days are off. Run this stuff on the side. Make a little bit of money on the side and stuff. And just, uh, you know, start thinking about your family and, and uh, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you my brother? Are you I was like, yeah. I was like, bro, you you pay me to be here. <laughs> you're not my only client. <laughs> like, you know, like, um, you're in my facility. Like, you know, like, you don't know your head from your ass and you're telling me uh, what I should do with my life. <laughs> and so then eventually, like, you know, we kind of got past that point and we're still really good friends and we still talk all the time and stuff like that. So that's the positive side. I never held it against him. But that was like one of the funniest things ever that I was just like, well, what the fuck, man? Like, like why, the, why the hell are you here? Well, I, I felt so down for that. I was like so mad for so long as well. And then I realized like he's looking at life through his lens, right? Yeah. And he's actually looking out for me where he cares. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, listen, I care about you. So I think you should do this and that. He just wasn't informed enough in knowing what my business is. You know, and what same is thing, there. like obviously podcasting. I'm yeah. Mom and dad are going to have a little concern. Yeah, but like, or even like just people are like, oh, can you make a living? Like every YouTuber yeah. gets that question. Yeah. Now, yeah. the goal is to get yeah, there. For sure. For sure. Right? Yeah. Like you mentioned, um, do what you love and try to make it what you can. You can try to make what you love into a career in which yeah. you did that yeah. in training. For sure. Like now we're trying to do that you know, in the sports world, plus yeah. these conversations yeah, we allowed sure. to as well. 100%. Because we want to share people's stories, especially if they're not mainstream Absolutely. people, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I guess this is a little bit, um, have you ever felt like a hypocrite when you're training people, but then you're telling them what you're saying, what telling them what to do, what to eat, or like how to mm -hmm. do that My Fitness Pal stuff, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you're not doing it yourself. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. So, when uh, I got my first injury, um, powerlifting, I uh, was squatting and I spasmed my back while I had about 315 on my back. I dropped the bar and I was just had to get carried off the platform. And after that, um, went through a dark, depressive state. That was kind of like around along the same times with the stuff that was happening with my dad. He was probably bo about to pass away. And um, I started eating like shit. Like I went from... 185 pounds up to 220 i was eating like shit i uh, felt like shit i was depressed meanwhile trying to tell people to be positive and work out hit your macros and xyz and stuff like that and and it was like a good almost a year where i felt like a complete hypocrite where i was like you know not practicing what i preached at all and um but it was because i was going through a super dark time in my life and eventually you know crawled out of it and and didn't hold it against myself which is good because usually i do in those types of sense but uh yeah, that was probably one time where I definitely was. Yeah, because yeah. I, I felt something similar. There's a reason why I started going to you mm -hmm. guys because I used to coach. Um, yeah, I used to coach him. I used to coach some other soccer teams, and I would see I would make kids run laps or mm -hmm. I would make them do sprints yeah. or like squats on the spot type mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I remember, and then like, this is what got to me. And I kind of was going through some stuff in mm -hmm. my past, mm -hmm. but you know, family related, mm -hmm. school related. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and obviously I know I was insecure about my mm -hmm. body and stuff. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm like, oh, um, I don't want him or his teammates to be like me. So this is why I'm doing it. So I'm so, trying to make myself feel better right. that way without being myself. Justifying it, yeah. And then yeah. I remember I was, I was doing this to, uh, I was coaching a bunch of kids um, and they're like one of the dads, um, not dad, like it wasn't even his kid involved. I think it was mm. his like, nephew was involved, but mm. he, um, he was just a, another coach there. He said, oh, you should join in with them. And I'm like, oh shit right like in my head yeah, and i'm yeah. like okay that's yeah. where i'm like yeah. i need yeah. to like yeah. obviously not make myself better but i'm like first of all like your like your story about the guy telling you what to do yeah yeah like yeah. what are you telling yeah me what yeah. To do? yeah at the same time i'm like he's kind of right yeah, like it sure. is a hypocritical for thing sure. right for sure. so for sure that's obviously you gotta make 
do what you gotta do. Yeah, hundred so. percent. Yeah, well, the fuck you making me run so much, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, time to get some payback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Payback, yeah. right? Get soccer player. Huh? But, um, you train at least from what I've seen on the post. Some big names, Jazzy mm-hmm. B, because mm-hmm. obviously mm-hmm. he was like related to Pradeep mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. But Jinder Mahal, WWE mm-hmm. superstar. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you had uh, first of all? What was that experience of training bigger names? Yeah, like some of them, like Jazzy B's a global superstar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Jinder Mahal, big WWE yeah. guy, Punjabi yeah. community. Have you trained others, and what was the experience like training them? Yeah, I mean, uh, they're human beings, man. It's it's crazy. I mean, uh, Jazzy B, I think Pradeep trained him most of the time, so I just observed how yeah. he did his stuff and stuff. But we always had conversations and stuff, and he's really again like he's got both his feet on the ground, right? Yeah. Just normal guy, just like everybody else. Um, Jinder Mahal was pretty intense. He was actually coming in to scout out the facility for uh, a documentary he was going to shoot. But um, so I was like, yeah, he's like, come in. He's like, I was like, yeah, that's fine. I'll put you through a workout and stuff. And uh, guy's a fucking tank, man. Like what yeah. you see is what you get with gender, right? Yeah. Um, uh, and what they don't know, what most people don't know about gender is like he's a serial entrepreneur. Like I got to kind of pick his brain a bit. And and uh, wrestling isn't the only way he makes money. He makes money like, do, you know, flipping houses and, and doing a lot of stuff. The guy is a natural born hustler um, and his work ethic is crazy. And one of the other ones that we had was uh, Gurdarshan St. Lion uh, Manga. Yeah, he's someone we're trying to definitely reach get on yeah. yeah definitely he's um the guy is i'm convinced he's made out of metal like the guy i kind of like kind of wrestle with like mess around with him a bit and and he's just built like a brick shit house like for those fucking people nuts. that don't know um saint lion manga gardarshan saint yeah. lion manga is a mma fighter one one uh, one, uh, one one championship one championship yeah, yeah. so yeah. dream clients that you would love to uh, train? Dream clients, man. I feel like all my clients are my dream clients, like that oh, regular yeah. person. The, my dream client is someone I can make the biggest impact with, right? Um, someone that isn't coming to just, you know, grow, like uh, say it's for women, like grow a nice ass or tight waist. Yeah. Uh, someone that is kind of going through it and um, I can introduce uh, weight training to or any kind of training to as something that they're going to be using the rest of their life. Um, okay. That's my dream. Client. I'll word it a little bit different. Yeah, uh-huh. Someone that's already like a mainstream celebrity, wrestler, uh, athlete, like someone like that. Who, if, if you were like, I know you said Tim Duncan would be uh, before. Yeah, Tim Duncan would. Tim yeah, Duncan. He's, yeah, he's got a great team already. He's <laughs> um, hmm. If you could think of one on the spot, but yeah, I mean, I gotta think about this now. <laughs> there's probably there's probably one that I'd love to just kind of shoot the shit with, and train. Hmm. You know who would be dope because he's retired now? Um, Marshawn Lynch because he'd be oh, yeah. <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. He'd be hilarious Skittles. and he could probably push some real fucking numbers. Yeah. Uh, he'd be a lot of fun to kind of rock a couple of what, months. What with. would your reaction be if he's like having Skittles on his break? Oh, I'd do whatever you like, want. Do whatever right? you are, Marshawn right? Lynch, man. He could do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Let's go. Uh, oh, cool. oh, yeah, so cool. Quick question for me. Have you ever made like anyone puke? Like, yes, the, many people. Many, 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 many people. Was it you that was the first to know? The Rajveer. He was the first person I made. Uh, Rajveer Graywall, man. Shout out to him. Um, uh, he was like first time doing the sled. And we didn't, first time we had a sled, we didn't really know how it worked. Um, young kid, soccer player, um, put him on the sled and walked. Did, I think, two, maybe three sprints. Walked straight into the washroom and violently <laughs> puked. I uh, made someone puke. I think it was like a couple of weeks ago. They come in, came in hungover. That it wasn't right. <laughs> they had drunk. They had been drinking the night before. They didn't tell me, and um, yeah, very quickly they packed their shit up and they left for the yeah. day. Yeah, <laughs> the, the sled always got to me. I don't think I did puke, but like I'm always like no, hunched I did. over. I just didn't tell. Like, I, I, yeah, because I used to come like what six, seven a.m. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. It was part deep at the time, yeah. and I remember like I was done. Mm-hmm. I go to the washroom. Like, okay, I just kind of you got to get it out. That's yeah. the only time I did 100%. it. But yeah, 100%. yeah, it's a, it's a sled that will get you. Yeah, it's a I love the sled. Yes. I'll be yeah, honest with you, but. Well, um, the one thing I didn't like, I, I just the squats they get to me all the time. Yeah, yeah. The lunges. I guess like, you squats. lunges are worse, man. I they get yeah. you so sore. Yeah. Um. Okay. So the last fun topic before we close it out with a couple of things here. Um. Jeb Mets that piss you off. Hmm. And I guess I, I'll throw in the first one. Upper body all day, like yeah, yeah, the yeah, young yeah. teenager, yeah. high school mentality. Oh, yeah. no legs, all, all yeah. chest, like yeah. whippersnapper r- shit. Yeah, start off with for that. me, uh, yeah, definitely upper body's up there. But the biggest one for me is that uh, working out stunts your growth. Uh, there's actually been studies to show the contrary on that. Um, there's not been a single study on this planet or in our history that has shown that working out at a young age has stunted growth ever. Um, there's nothing to that. And uh, the for women, my second worst is. Um, lifting weights makes you bulky that's not what it does right um it's a lot of it's your diet's going to dictate what you look like uh weight training is just going to be a caveat to your diet right yeah, yeah. um I'm, i don't know if this is one but like cardio kills gains 
Okay, so with that, like, it, yeah. again, it depends on um, your diet, right? Yeah. If you start reducing the amount of protein you have, um, it's not going to necessarily just target your muscle. Like, you're not going to just lose muscle. The body doesn't just target one type of, of, of loss or gain. Um, but it is going to be, again, uh, it's going to come down to diet, right? Yeah. Like, I've been running mainly now, and I feel like I've maintained quite a bit of muscle you're mass. The yeah. Muscle. Yeah. You might have so, to, like, change your... Um, uh, workout in yeah. terms of lifting. Hundred percent. Right? I lift. I only lift. Uh, so one day is uh, I microdose my lifting, so it's like a twenty minute session of weight training, and the other day is just like yeah, strength training. Just so two days of weight training, and I run five days a week. Okay. Yeah. All right. Before we get it, close it out. The Nation Talk podcast is yeah. that coming back? It definitely, it definitely <laughs> is coming back. I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of changes. Jazz um, yeah. moved on to other things this year, so I'm running it solo dolo. Um, it's definitely on the docket. Things are looking good for me to start it. Probably top of the year next year. Um, I'm toying with the idea of having a new uh, host or run through a bunch of guest hosts yeah. um, until I kind of decide what I want to do with it. Um, definitely want to take the comedy side of it, and then not. I feel like we got a little too heavy. And uh, I want to keep it light. I want to keep it chill. Something like this. Maybe. Something exactly like this, yeah. like where it's just like you're shooting the shit and kind of dive into the deep stuff, but keep it natural. Keep it on yeah. like, you know, what's going on in the world today and, and, and stuff like that. And just something that can just kind of flow. Those are like the best ones, right? Like this yeah. one, yeah, I have questions prepared. Yeah. Like obviously we're uh -huh. not going to like, mm -hmm. I have to prepare a little bit too beforehand. Hey, we got two guys sitting here. If yeah. you would like to come, <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you want us to come on, it's Absolutely. up to you. Oh, no, for sure. Yeah. But like, it's just like, just, just having a conversation type that's of thing, it. right? Yeah. Like, that's all we want. Like, we want... Just get a topic and just build get a off topic yeah. and just keep building For off sure. it, you know, that's adding it. to it. And just, like, just see how people are doing, man. Just checking out people. That's kind of, like, the only thing I really want to do is just, like, yeah. man, how the fuck are you doing? Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Now that we know who you are and what you've done, like, yo, man, what's, what's up? What's going on in life? All man? right. Last thing before we close it out. Uh, officially advice now i have three types of advice i want to ask from you specifically first off for sure advice for people that went went pretty much young ben young okay. benipal mm -hmm. what they went through that are people might be watching this or mm -hmm. um had gone through this or might mm -hmm. be going through this so your advice to them um always trust time what's going on right now is going to feel like this is what life is like forever but everything is temporary Every feeling is temporary, including happiness. So you can't strive to be happy all the time. Happiness is a feeling. It's not a state that you stay in, right? Um, and so feel all your feelings through. You feel like shit, feel it through. You feel sad, feel it through. Um, uh, if you feel happy, feel it through, right? Um, but just remember that, yeah, for lack of a better term, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. You are not your problems. You are not what's happening to you. You are what you decide to discover yourself to be. All right, next one. You, this is something you mentioned to me on the phone when we started the podcast, but advice for people that want to start up a business slash YouTube podcast. And I know I'll give a little bit of context. You did mention to me, like, I regret it not starting this two years ago when mm -hmm. he was ready to do this. Mm -hmm. And you, something, you said something about an oak tree. I don't remember yeah, fully. Yeah, so I guess yeah. I know that's going to be part of your advice, yeah, but other yeah. advice that you have along with it. Um, uh, the best time to plant an oak tree was 20 years ago and right now, right? So if you're thinking about it, don't get caught up in having the perfect plan matter of fact fuck the plan just start doing start exploring start fucking around with different things that are gonna kind of be about the what you want to get into um don't try and have all of it. it's never going to be the perfect time the perfect time is always right now always right now so just start right be prepared to make mistakes don't hold them against yourself right know that the mistakes are lessons know that um you're gonna and celebrate your wins man when you get your wins celebrate them don't just be like okay uh, you know i don't want to jinx it there's no such thing as jinxing it man this can it's gonna feel like this can be taken away from you at any moment and and the reality of the situation is it can't and it won't you yeah. gotta just put your head down know what you want and honestly the best way to know is like it's an innate feeling you feel it here not here and when you know here it's gonna serve you it's gonna work out because you gotta just follow it up with work ethic all right, last piece of advice, and this is where you can start promoing, you know, Fit Nation and your personal page and stuff. Advice for those who want to start working out but don't have like the resources to, mm -hmm. don't know what to do, mm -hmm. and yeah. Um, just start, honestly, uh, with this day and age with uh, the internet and stuff, there's plenty of resources out there. And for the people that are um, self-conscious and stuff, honestly, nobody cares about you everyone's at the gym to kind of do their own thing and i know it feels like everyone's watching you but honestly no one is um so the first bit is just kind of get out there and there's plenty of like resources out on the internet where you can kind of 
develop a very beginner's program. Uh, and the biggest advice that I'd give is don't go out there to kill yourself. You know, soreness um, is going to feel good because it feels like you've done something, but um, you don't want to just ruin your body where you can't work out for three days. You know, less is always more when it comes to training and slowly develop a plan. And if you are looking for coaching, I mean, you can always reach out to us. Um, our Instagram is at FitNationBC. Mine is at FitNationBen. Um, you can always just get out there and kind of just reach out to us and kind of come in for a free session. We can kind of show you what's up and uh, if we're the right fit for you, it'd be great. All right, so oh, what, unplug your YouTube now. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, if you're looking for our old episodes of uh, Nation Talk Podcast, it's everything is at Nation Talk Podcast. It's uh, at Nation Talk Podcast on Instagram and YouTube. Yeah, everything will be linked below, so just click that, yep, uh, click that as well. So if you want to hear Ben's stories and make an appointment, just go there Follow as well. Me. All right, yeah, that's pretty much it from us. Ben, Ben and Paul. Thank you. <laughs> Paul. We appreciate you coming on, man. We Thank always, you. like, you know, share your journey. People Most need to deserve to know the story. Man. And hopefully we help people out. And yeah, we definitely. genuinely appreciate you. Yeah. Thank well, you for having me, man. This is a full circle moment for me, man. I'm yeah. Really yeah. Come a long way. <laughs> Enjoyed man. This it. It was a lot of fun. Thank yeah, you thank you for coming right. because like, we know you're working up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. I wouldn't have missed this for the world, man. All right. To everybody else watching, thank you. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.